comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadriando. This is your host, Marcy. And today I'm joined by my fabulous guest. And I'm going to let her introduce herself. Her name is Imani. Hi, my name is Imani, a.k.a. The Hippie Mom. And I'm excited to be here. Uh, there, what do I... Who are you? Who am I? What are all the hats you wear? Well, I am first... First things first, I am a writer. Um, I am an artist. I am a mother to a son who is nonverbal and on the spectrum of autism. Um, and I have this company called The Hippie Mom. I started it when Jude just got diagnosed and I just didn't know, like, I didn't know anything about anything. I didn't know what was autism. I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And I started sharing captions on Instagram, just like like really raw things of what we were going through, what I was feeling, and how I felt about the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And um, little by little, the following started to grow. And there were so many moms who would write to me and mm -hmm. say, like, I really relate to what you're saying. Or like, wow, you speak exactly what you know i'm feeling and i couldn't find words so um i started the blog mm -hmm. um based off of the responses and now it's growing into this like online shop for herbs um and my premise is just like be your own healer because i feel like we have a lot of the power in, within ourselves and mm -hmm. that we're so uh, programmed to think that we have to rely on modern day medicine or pharmaceutical companies when in reality we have all these herbs we have just so much at our fingertips just the way we eat you know like yeah. the way we change our diet how we can heal ourselves in that way so um that's that's kind of the premise of my blog is to teach other moms or just lead by example of mm -hmm. how we live our lives and um ultimately I feel like I can reverse uh, not the autism diagnosis, because I know it's always going to be there, but just mm -hmm. reverse the symptoms of that make his life, mm -hmm. you know, his day-to-day -day super hard. Yeah. So um, the way that I like to give the, my audience, like, how we connected. So initially, well, we got connected via um, Rick. Oh, yeah. Rick Herrera. But before that, I had already been following Imani because I think it was during the pandemic last year sometime. There was like a viral story um, that I saw was being shared about her oh. on the airplane with her son. And we're going to get more into that later. But yeah, like I really admired her. And then I started seeing like the type of person that she is. And it really aligned with who I am and the things that I believe in as well. Like I, as um, with respect to the like being more holistic and like going back to our roots and um, embracing that, um, that knowledge, that, that ancestral knowledge that we already have. So um yeah, so today we're going to talk about disabilities and discrimination. Yes. So the reason why the topic came up is because of Imani's story, right? And we often forget that we, even though there has been a lot of progress, we are still a long ways away from where it should be. So, you know, through this podcast and everything that I've been doing and the work that I've been putting in and other people as well, we kind of want to raise awareness and also kind of change the, the what is it, like the 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 way that things are, you know, yeah. we want to uproot the system and kind of change things for the better for our kids. Cause right now they're babies and we can defend them, but they're not going to be able to be doing that later on mm. as adults. Yeah. Yeah. That part is, is really the scariest part to think about. And I try not to go there, but it's really hard to, to imagine Jude as a 14 year old boy or mm -hmm. you know a 40 year old man like mm -hmm. I don't know what the world is gonna look like let alone how he's gonna be perceived in this world mm -hmm. um and uh, you know as someone who is on the spectrum but then is nonverbal, I feel like there's just so much that comes along with that mm -hmm. um and I think it's just automatically people assume that he's like quote-unquote dumb which I hate I really I can hate that. Like, it really just, like, grinds my gears. I'm like, first of all, just because he doesn't have expressive language at the moment does not mean that he doesn't have receptive language and he doesn't understand what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and he really does. Um, I 
can't speak for the entire <laughs> spectrum. Mm -hmm. I just can see from what I've seen and what I've witnessed. And there's just really, it really pisses me off, especially in education. Yeah. Where you have teachers who are supposed to be, you know, molding, yeah, yeah, molding your child into what they, uh, their highest person, right? Mm -hmm. And you got teachers who, with limiting beliefs, who put all of these restrictions on your kid. Yep. Um, and then project that onto to your kid. And it, it just sucks. You know, IEPs and all of that. I mean, I get it's for their services, but I try not to judge based off of what he can't do. And yeah. you know, just go on, on based of, like, what he can do. Yeah. And we've seen a huge progress of, what. well, he likes art. So mm -hmm. let's try to, like, incorporate that into the day-to-day um, he loves music. Okay, let's put music and art together. Mm -hmm. Like, real chill vibes. And I swear, I feel like it went from scribble on the paper to full faces on yeah. a page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, excited. yeah, yeah. So, um, we were talking before before we went on air, but we were you were telling me when you first noticed that your child was different. Yeah. So, can you just kind of, like, tell our audience a little bit, like, when you started noticing the change and you know you can be as raw or as honest as you you know as you can be okay yeah as long as you're okay with yeah, yeah okay um so i noticed the switch around 18 months and when you said that you noticed at 18 months i automatically mm -hmm. was like after that shot right mm -hmm. so after the mmr shot jude um just changed it was a switch that went off he was talking he had words he had language um it wasn't like fluid but he knew, like, he was saying colors. He knew his ABCs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you go and say, Jude, go get your shoes, and he get his shoes. Like, just receptive language was there. Mm -hmm. um, he gets the shots. Uh, well, first things first, we go to the hospital, the doctors for an annual visit. And um, at the time, I wasn't full on, quote, unquote, hippie. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I didn't want to inject my kid with, like, 20 something vaccines mm -hmm. right because there's like a whole list of vaccines especially in that first few months right? yeah so i i was gonna do it on my schedule and at the time i had missed like five vaccines okay um so they go and they see him and they are they automatically see his chart and they're so pissed off they're pissed they leave the room the doctor comes in um and it's just like you know we could call cbs on you um, for, you know, neg yeah, negligence. And I was just 23, <laughs> didn't know anything. You hit me with CPS. I'm like, all right, whatever, like, let's do this, right? Mm -hmm. So let's catch up on the vaccine. She was like, well, let's do four Whew, Let's do two of the shots today. So, but here's the thing. I didn't know that the MMR had three shots in one shot. So the MMR is three shots in one. Wow. And then um, the chicken pox is, I believe, two. That's oh, no, 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 no. It's just one. But still, that granted, that's four shots in one day. Mm -hmm. So um, at first, Jude, you know, showed signs of just tiredness mm -hmm. and, you know, lethargic. And I just was like, okay, well, it, it's expected he has shots today, mm -hmm. right? So they tell you, give him Tylenol and, you know, he'll be fine. He isn't fine by the time we get home. He's crying, really irritable, really tired. I'm mm -hmm. talking about couldn't even keep his eyes open. Um, I was, like, not thinking too much about it, so I just let him fall asleep early, and that was that. Um, in the morning, um, early, early, early in the morning, like 3 a.m., he wakes up and he's screaming, like a scream I've never heard before. Like pain. Pain, like, like, you know the difference, mm -hmm. right, with the, the cries. He was screaming like that, that painful cry. And I knew something was wrong. And the screech of his scream traumatizes me every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and... So I, 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 the first thing I did was check his temperature. His temperature was like 104. Oh, my God. I'm like, this isn't normal. Like, this isn't normal. So, of course, I go and get the Tylenol. Mm -hmm. I give it to him. Um, and, you know, he the crying just continues, but then it subsides once the Tylenol kicks in and he falls asleep. Mm -hmm. um, in the morning, same thing. 
very irritable, just not himself. I was like, nah, this, there's something going on here. Mm -hmm. So I called him doctors and I said, you know, something's not right. Like he's not himself. He doesn't want to eat. He's not looking at me in the eye. This was the next day. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? So the doctor was like, well, give it some time. You could come. It was a weekend. He was like, come on Monday. So uh, I remember uh, the shots being on a leg for for some reason because they couldn't do it on his arm because he was just like flinging. Mm-hmm. He didn't want them to do it. So they did it on his leg and he couldn't put pressure on his leg. So he was limping. I hit school. Oh, my God. So I, he's limping. He's not looking me in the eye. He's not eating. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what's going yeah. on here? So we get to the doctor's office and... The nurse um, wasn't the same. It wasn't the same doctor, um, but it was whatever doctor was there in the clinic. In the like clinic, clinic right? Got it. So she was like, "Well, let's see. Let's see how he's walking." So she's sitting there, and Judah's over here, and she's walk. He's walking to her, and um, and he's limping, and she her face, her face. She her face said it all. She knew. She knew, and she knew to a point where I was like, "Yo, this has happened before." So, um, ever since that day and ever since that time, I uh, looked into suing. Mm-hmm. I looked into um, malpractice because that's what, um. So I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no, it's okay. that's called a vaccine injury. It you is. Know? Yeah, it is. And um, here's the thing with that though. You have to report the injury within 72 hours to get a, a lawsuit. Wow. Yeah, and I had no idea. So by the time I even thought that this could be anything, like a case, it was already a too week. Late, yeah. It was too late. And they were like, well, it's kind of hard to prove, is what they say. Plus, when you sign those papers <sighs> for those vaccines, it in the fine print, it says you can't sue. He has sued these companies. So you really are sending off whatever happens, happens. Mm-hmm. And if something like an adverse reaction like our cases, yeah. um, it, they have no responsibility. There's no, like, there's nothing. And there's a handful of cases where they've gotten, you know, people mm-hmm. have won. But, I mean, any, it, it's just really eerie. It's scary. It sucks that it's, it's, you know, we are made an example, but I also have to think of how many other kids, especially Latinx and black kids Mm -hmm. who are fall victim to this. Yes. And why is the the status of autism so high in our boys? It started when Aiden first got, because Aiden's older than Jude. Mm -hmm. When Aiden first got diagnosed, it was like one in 80 something kids. Mm. It's up to 1 in 44. 1 in 44 children are diagnosed with autism. Okay? And what pisses me off, and I'm not, like, I'm going to excuse myself with my audience. Like, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm not saying, like, you know, oh, no, all vaccines are bad. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that there's people, not everybody's the same. Everybody's organism is different. There's people that are highly sensitive to certain things, just like there's people that are allergic to milk that there's people that are allergic to stone fruit, that are allergic to different things. Our kids might have been allergic to something contained in the vaccine, right? And that could have provoked, like, this adverse reaction, where which resulted in autism. Yeah. It can't be that all of these children, all of a sudden, are now, you know, getting diagnosed. Okay, yeah, fine. There's a, there's a, um, a more, um, a more precise way to diagnose them, right? But what is it about these boys, especially boys? And then the girls. Yes. Have you seen girls with autism? It's, it's, it's even more worse. severe. It's more severe, yeah. The symptoms are way more pronounced. And and it's, it's just, there is, like, I think as a community, we need to all come together and say and question what's actually going on. Um, I'm not against vaccines either. I think mm-hmm. that, you know, polio and and for instance or you know like so many other diseases have been prevented Mm -hmm. um from vaccines and we wouldn't be the society we are without that but we also need to acknowledge that there is a one percent 
right? 1% is supposedly reported with adverse reactions. So if you think of, take of everybody in the world and you put 1%, that's a that's large a community that's being re- affected negatively by these vaccines. And then even that, like even what you were saying, going back to what you said of that you wanted to schedule the vaccines, right? Yeah. And space them out. Maybe, okay, maybe the, it could have been avoided had the kids like staggered it out like maybe we, we could have staggered it out and they wouldn't have had that reaction the thing is that there's so many chemicals there's so many things mm-hmm. in these vaccines and you're giving them to them together and then they're highly sensitive children yeah that that was the result and then the thing is like you know kids like jude like it breaks my heart because like the fact that he was speaking before and now he has he's non-verbal yeah yeah you know with respect to expressive language that is that is hard yeah i mean it's heartbreaking to be his mother and see it and watch it Mm -hmm. and there is if i'm being honest um a large part of myself that still grieves what could have been if this didn't happen to my son um it's not that i don't accept him because i fully accept him if he were anything Mm -hmm. you know he comes out and says he's gay i'm gonna fully you know Mm -hmm. I'm going to accept him open arms. It's not even about that. It's more of like, this could have been prevented. And Mm -hmm. my thing is, um, you know, I had to really sit down for a really long time and be honest with myself and those feelings. Because Mm -hmm. um, one thing I hate is saying my story and then having someone say, well, you're supposed to accept your son for what they have. And it's just, we're human beings, guys. Like, I said, like, I had a whole, I had a whole episode about the fact that I went through, like, the grieving process Mm. about the future that I thought my son was going to have. And whoever judges me for being upset or being sad about it, first of all, there's a lot of this toxic positivity bullshit. Like, (laughs) don't get me started. I'm sorry. (laughs) We're allowed to have our feelings and it's normal. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. Like, to, it's, it's, it, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna reduce it to something as simple as food. Yeah. If you're expecting to have a hamburger and then all of a sudden you come home and there's soup on the table. No. Are, you're gonna be disappointed. Not disappointed. You're not gonna be as happy about it. You know what I'm saying? Still, you're yeah. gonna eat because you're hungry. Yeah. Yeah. But it's basically the same concept. Yes, they have a different future, but we're allowed to feel our feelings and, and be okay with that. You know, like people should be okay with it. Like, and I hate the, oh my God, when people are like, well, it could have been worse. Oh, okay. Oh, what's much worse than than seeing your child um, have the hit the milestone to now being eighteen months at five years old? Mm-hmm. You know, like let's be real about this. Mm-hmm. And I can't. I hate it. I, I I'll I'll be the first to say um, whenever someone says or tries to correct me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you going through this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, then uh, you tell me how to act. If you were doing this, like, re- like, listen, there's parents that go through so much stuff, and, and we're great moms. Right. But we're allowed to have our feelings and, and, and you know, go through go through what, what we're going through. Right. You know, the thing is, we're not going to wallow in those feelings and be like, oh, my God, woe is me, whatever, right. and just stay stuck there. But our feelings are valid, and, and, and you know, like, Unless you're going through the situation, and even then, you know one autistic. If you meet one person with autism, you know one autistic person. Yeah, that that's it. That does not mean that every person with autism, every person on the spectrum, is gonna be or react the same way right, to different right, things. Right, that part. That one you met one person with autism. You met one person. Yeah, that's so real. And I think that. You know, people don't really know, like, what to say in that situation when you tell them, oh, my son is, you know, autistic, because they automatically want to just, like, will sleep in and, like, be understanding, which, you know, that's that just shows humanity, mm-hmm. right? But I think that if anybody could take anything from this conversation is that uh, I don't think that's what we're asking for. Mm-hmm. I think that what we're asking for is to be heard. And to have our feelings acknowledged and um, say, you know what, this is this is hard. That's a hard situation, but I'm here for you Mm -hmm. to hold space if you ever want to talk. Yeah. You know, like, I think that should be the 
uh, approach for any friends or families yes. with the kids with autism? Oh my god, the first thing people ask me, they're like, "Oh, so your son? He's fourteen, and and when are you gonna have another one?" And and like, mm. I legit have a fear. I have a fear. And it's not that I I wouldn't love a child another child that comes out if they if they happen to be on the spectrum I guess yeah. uh, as well, but it's like it's a gamble yeah. and I'm not a betting person at all at all you know what I'm saying <laughs> so like yeah. you know, respect it's like all about respect and then like understanding and hearing exactly what you said like hearing what we have to say and like absorbing the message and like kind of taking that into account. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's really it's really easy to point a finger and be like, oh my god, she's so ungrateful. Her child is this. Her child is that. But you know, there's so many other complexities. Like the whole show, <laughs> I talk about all these things that I went through with Aiden. I, I'm actually gonna do an episode about like right. all the stuff that that yeah. goes uh, puberty. all the things puberty, puberty, all, all these things. Other. Like you know, it's very different. Like. You know, the future, I don't know if Aiden's going to be able to be independent. Mm. You know, when he turns 21, I don't know if he's going to be able to live by yeah. himself. Yeah. So it, it's, 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 there's so many complexities in it. And, and the fact that some people love to judge and, like, you know, uh, have their, sit on their soapbox and be like, well, you're a bad mom. Yeah. You're saying this and that. Um, I'm sorry. No. Shut the fuck. Yeah, I, no, that part, that last part, and if you don't, can I say it? Shut yeah. the fuck up, for real, like, <laughs> for real. That's so serious. Like, for real, man, and, and I think these honest conversations that you're having is is really important for, for other moms who feel alone because th- we're not having, we're not seeing these conversations, mm-hmm. and you've got a lot of toxic positivity, um, especially when it comes to uh, neuro neural no, typical, typical um, diagnosis is so I think that to have a mom who's just had their son uh, or their child diagnosed and then hear a conversation so candid is going to give such comfort yeah um, I know I remember listening to something um, I don't even know when or what podcast it was but a mom was saying something similar, like just how raw it was to have a child on the spectrum. And um, I was like, damn, I could feel that way. That's allowed? Yeah. Oh, great. Like, I'm not alone here. Dude, and then you're so young. How old are you, Imani? Uh, 28. 28, yeah. man. It's a lot. Oh, girl, my like, back hurt. I had Aiden when I had Aiden when I was... Uh, I was pregnant when I was 24. I had my 25th oh. birthday and I gave birth to him when I was 25. Wow. So I'm 38 now. But it's it's a lot, man. Mm-hmm. Like going through all of that and then and not having the support of your yeah. child's father. Oh, girl. And not only that, but like. <laughs> I just had. Yeah. I'm, oh my eyes. I'm sorry, guys. I know a lot of people can't see. But, you know, <laughs> the fact that girl. the person that you were supposed to have. Mm you know, this child with, and they don't even try Mm. to understand them or look up information or figure it out. Like, that is just wild to me. And going back to conversation, (laughs) sorry, guys. Okay. Um, So once 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 he got diagnosed, did he get early intervention? Yeah. So um, as soon as, okay, so how it happened was my mom is a special education teacher wow yeah so um uh as soon as we noticed the switch she was actually the one to say um i think you need to get him evaluated Mm -hmm. and there was a period of of time where i was just like in denial and Mm -hmm. i didn't want to and i was like he's fine and i was angry and i was pissed off and i just was not trying to hear it Mm -hmm. um but then i i realized like i'm only hurting him Mm -hmm. so uh we finally got the early intervention um and it was so hard being in an office with people who don't know you don't know your kid Mm -hmm. who are just who just go off of uh you know a checklist of what he can and cannot do and hearing a lot of can'ts is just really it's disheartening it's hard i feel like uh if we can affect some kind of change, I would love for that instead of being like a deficit based approach mm. on evaluations, like saying what the kid can do. Cause like at the end of the day, um, first of all, the kids can like, yes, they don't have the language yet, but they can perceive, you know, people's attitudes and stuff. And then 
you know, for the mom too. Like, what, even when I do, I do IP meetings. I'm a special education teacher too. So yeah, wow. Yeah, so when I do IP meetings, I make sure that I tell the parent like exactly what the kid is like capable of doing and like the the progress. You know, nobody wants to be in a meeting like, oh, your kid doesn't do this, doesn't mm. do that, X Y Z. You know. So I understand what, uh, what, how you were feeling though. But and then so what 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 services did they get from when you first when when they finally gave them the diagnosis? It was was it PDD and OS that they gave them. At the beginning, or did they give the uh, diagnosis of autism like, straight up? They just said it uh, straight up. Okay. They were like, oh, yeah, he's definitely on the spectrum, um, which was another thing was really hard to hear because, you know, you had all these evaluations, you know, that period where they're just in and out of your yeah. house and doing all these evals. Um, and they'd say for, what, 30 minutes, and they're judging him based off of that first encounter. So it was really hard for me to accept that diagnosis at first because it was like, you you don't even know him and he needs to warm up to you. Like, like I knew there wasn't, like something wasn't right. But then like when I finally heard it, it just, like I felt so defeated. Mm. I just started crying. Like, oh yeah. And it wasn't even like a, li- like a little bit like a sniffle here. It was like, you know, the tears that oh, like on your brain. Oh like, yeah. It's done. The like, snot from your brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, I, I had one of those actually a few days ago because I was going through, uh, for Women's Day, mm-hmm. uh, I was going through videos of just like feeling empowered when it was mm-hmm. the most empowering moment I felt as a woman. Mm-hmm. And it always goes back down to breastfeeding and, you know, having juice. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were like videos of him um, talking. And, and there was also a video of him at six months saying, I love you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's another thing. Like, he was so advanced, man. He had his head up at, at two days old, like, turning over yeah. in a week. Like, he's a weaker turning over, doing coming. It was just Jesus. wild. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, all that quinoa and shit that I ate while I was pregnant <laughs> really worked. And so, um, yeah, so... I have one of those moments in my kitchen, and it's always either in my kitchen or in my bathroom, where I just broke down, and I was like, yo, I haven't cried like this in a minute, but you know what's so great about that is realizing that I think we just get so wrapped up in the Mm day-to-day that we don't have time to process our emotions, but like, this is not just a cry, get it out one time, and that's it. It's like crying, grieving for the rest of your life. Yeah, and and there's different levels to it. Definitely, definitely. Ay, ay, ay. Ay. But what did they give him? Did they give him? Did they give him like speech and OT? Oh yeah. So they um he didn't have any language at that point anymore because he completely regressed. So they gave him speech. They gave him OT, PT, um, and yeah, that's all the services, right? Mm -hmm. OT, PT, and speech. Um, he he received it all and ABA. Um, and then ABA was just like another thing because that boy wasn't gonna get bribed to do nothing at that point. <laughs> he didn't care. You got goldfish. I ain't doing it. I'm not putting it in. It's like you keep your triangle shaped. Uh, I'm not putting it in. So that was difficult. <laughs> And um, and it is so controversial. Um, it is. And for the people that are listening and that are new to the podcast, yes. ABA is Applied Behavior Analysis, which is like a therapy mm-hmm. that teaches a replacement behavior for behaviors that the child has. So basically, um, initially, the therapist is like pairing with your child. They're figuring out what they like, what they enjoy. And then with that, they're like essentially convincing them yes to do what they want them to do because they're going to get this prize i mean mm-hmm. at first glance you think and then this is going to sound crazy um it's it seems like it's like you're training uh uh an animal but for definitely me, that's how i got it too yeah I was so, like, is my, my kid a dog yeah so you know it it works you know it works for some children you know it doesn't work for every child you know i'm not going to tell you that aba works for everybody but i feel like a lot of the things that aiden was doing he was able to get better through aba but then the thing is like once they reach school age they take it away so it's like that's so that's that's what we're going through right now Mm -hmm. you know a whole fight in the lawsuit with the district um and we won thank god good amen 
Um, but now we're also going through this fact of um, now you have to find a school. It's finding a school, and it's March. It's March, and then you have time though. Yonkers District, though, uh, basura. I cannot stand it. Don't get me started. I don't understand. Well, are you okay with him being bust into the city in case that you find a school? I city? found a school in actually uh, Rockland County. And okay. It's uh, really, really nice. I think my friend's you know baby goes about? there. I have to, I'm have to. i going to get you the information. One of my guests from the show, um, Yadi, her son goes like, like a in little Rockland? bit of state, like in Rockland County. I it believe. might be the same one that I'm thinking of. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, love it. I love their approach. It's very nature based. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so maybe it is that. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna get you the information, okay, but yeah, I yeah. like it might be because like I know that she she was busing him up there at one point. Well, and I'll move out there if they accept him. I'll move. Like yeah, like I it's it's that's just, one thing. Like yeah, we're like so down for our kids. We're like, yo, we gotta move. Let's go. Let's go. Pack it up. <laughs> Pack it up. It's time that's to go. it. It's over. And. So yeah, so yeah, uh, we're it's a process, right? Like, it's a process. Uh, I this whole thing with the district, and I I I didn't even know that's another thing that I'm like I gotta be a parent, I gotta be an advocate, I gotta be it's a lot a of nurse. Work. So many, so many, and some days I'm barely me. I I tell people like I be getting my whole Karen on, like I'm I am that mom. Oh, me too, and I don't apologize no more. I don't care. <laughs> I'll say feel your feelings. That's okay. Listen, I will write an email, and I will follow up, and I will speak to the, the, the superintendent. I will have, if I have to talk to everybody in that district and, like, escalate it to the Department of Education for the state, I will. Definitely, and I'm not going to apologize. Like, they had him in a 6 to one to one and I'm looking at the kids that are with him, and there's nothing, I don't have anything against that, but there's kids with behaviors. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just because they're all they are all on the spectrum doesn't mean that behavior wise, like mm -hmm. you know, you can't have a kid that has certain behaviors with other kids, especially because Aiden a likes to copy things. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like if we see somebody doing it, it's like hmm, this person's getting attention. Yeah, let me do it too. Yeah. So you know, he was developing behaviors, and and like I didn't feel like he was progressing as much. So I had to fight the school, and they ended up putting him in a 12 to 1 now for junior high school. Amazing. How's but he doing? He's doing amazing. Oh, that's great. He's doing so well. Because the thing is, like, Aiden is a social kid, but if you put him with other people that are not talking and are not motivating him to speak, he's going to. It's just like you. Like, if, if you don't have to use your words, you're not going to. Well, I, if you can get something that you want with just, like, gestures, you will. Oh, and I think that's what you right now. Um, and that's why the speech is just not progressing because you uh, he is not surrounded by teachers who a believe he can or will talk again mm -hmm. um which makes a huge difference that's like so you're already putting that limitation on my kid and if he um isn't prompted to ask you just give it to him no how is he going to yeah that pisses me off nah man let me tell you Aiden had this speech um therapist he's actually the um he works He's the, the head of the Department of Speech Pathology at Columbia University Ooh. now. Ooh. But when he was working with Aiden, yeah. Aiden in early intervention, I remember he used to be like, he was from in, he was from India, and he'd be like, Marcia, you need to be firm with him and do not give him anything unless he puts a sentence together. Mm. So we started prompting, because he had the words, mm. but he was being lazy. So he would, he would be like, leche? And then... When we taught him, please, and I want, and then we taught him, we were like, I want leche, please. And then unless he said that, he wouldn't get it. Yeah. I want iPad, please. I want whatever, please. And it, like, you know, it gets a little annoying because you're saying please all the time. But <laughs> at, at the end of the day, like, now Aiden, I can't tell him, he, like, I can't get him to shut up. That's incredible. <laughs> I love that. And I can't wait because I know it's coming. He's going to get there. I He's know. He's going to get there. I the know. thing is, he needs, he needs speech pathologists, like, like the one that I'm talking about. That are gonna like make him say things because even me as a special education yeah. teacher, I I don't have a background in speech and I I make my students, especially when I was teaching six to one to one, I used to make them work for mm -hmm. whatever it was that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have to use that sentence. Like I get you have gestures, but if you have one or two words, you're yeah. gonna use those words to get what you want. And that's it. See, that makes a difference. It mm -hmm. makes a huge difference on the progress of your child. I had a kid that he was like barely verbal, and by the time that I left the school, he was singing. Wow, singing in class. 
That's amazing. And he would get angry. He'd be like, I'm angry. I'm like, okay, it's okay if you're angry. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. And like, I, I actually emailed the dad the other day. He was like, oh my God, he's doing so awesome. Oh, look at that. I love. See, that's a, the beauty. The difference. That's yes. also the beauty in this diagnosis too. You have to find like the, the silver lining and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but the beauty of it is when they do hit those milestones yeah. and then when they do make that progress, it's like, he wasn't doing that before. Like, that's incredible. Yeah. Like, one of the moms that I, I, with the episode that aired this week, she was talking about her son ate a blueberry and she was just like, floored. oh man, yeah. I can't even imagine. That's great. She was floored. Wow. I mean, people are like, probably like, oh, what's the, the big deal? Right. Blueberry. But if your kid has a food aversion. Yep. And then they try something new mm. that they had never eaten before or request something. Like, I made a party, ate and ate waffles the other day for the first time. Ah. And I was like, let's have a, a let's have a dance. And he's like, okay, mommy. I would just get all the waffles you in the world. Have, it'd, it'd be go, in the freezer. Have, have, have in the freezer. <laughs> like, whenever you want waffles, bro. And he's like, can I have scrambled eggs and waffles? And he knows it's like a Saturday, Sunday food. I love for that. Breakfast. I love so that. Mommy, he'll, he'll, he'll request it. But yeah, like it's 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 crazy. Um, so Imani, let's switch gears a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, what was it that happened on United Airlines? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, can can we talk about it? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, we were on our way back from Vegas visiting um a friend, my best friend and her family, and um, it was a late flight. It was about ten p.m. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew to pick that time because she was just going to be asleep, right? right? So, yes, the airport, everything is breezy. We get in, everything's good. Um, Judah's in the stroller, and he does not have a mask on. Um, at that time, COVID was like headlines, you know? Was it was it this year or the like 2020? 2021 actually okay. it was last year it was like when they opened everything back up that we could travel again yeah but it was it was still very like you gotta wear your mask yeah yeah, yeah 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 so um you know and 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 here's the thing like jude has a lot of sensory um processing disorder yeah. disorder so it's it's really difficult it's like right now he's wearing socks and that was huge Huge. He would not want them around his feet or any. It just it affects him, right? So let alone a mask. Okay, so he's not wearing a mask. I, I'm not gonna have him wear a mask. Mm -hmm. He don't want to wear it. And he's he holds his breath whenever anything is over his mouth. So mm -hmm. it's just like this is then a suffocation, risk for suffocation, mm -hmm. right? So he gets to um, give her a ticket, and they're like, he needs a mask, and I was like. I explained to him, like, well, you know, my son is on the spectrum of autism, and he just has a really bad reaction when wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. um, he ends up, he's at risk for suffocation. Mm -hmm. And he, they're like, well, how old is he? And at the time, he was four. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the mask, the mask mandate was for two and up. Mm -hmm. So um, they're like, well, he's past two, so he needs to wear and get over it. I was like, hold up. So I'm initially, you meet me, airy, very happy, you know, mm -hmm. chill, whatever. <laughs> the minute they told me to get over it, uh, Mama Bear came out. I was like, excuse me. I brought out, you know, the law for Nevada mm -hmm. and what the law says about the mask. Mm -hmm. And it says if anybody's at risk for suffocation, they should not be um, mandated to wear, wear a mask. I pulled it up and I said, According to this line, this is what this says. So you have to oblige by it. And they just were like, "Yeah, no, we can't get on." At that point, um, you know, it, it really escalated. This man by the name of Robert Holland, who United has never done anything about it. It did. They didn't reach out, or they reached out, but it was a very generic response. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, the guy, Robert Holland, was the manager at the time, and he was just like, he was just so rigid. He didn't, he wasn't trying to understand. He had a very lack of empathy. Um, I, I also think that race has a huge deal about it because, again, we're in Nevada, Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I just think he thought that I was trying to be problematic on purpose, when in reality, I was trying to explain to him what autism is. And then he mm -hmm. also asked for a diagnosis that says uh, his autism. And I was like, that's against HIPAA. Like, I'm not going to give you that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And also, I don't have that with me. Mm -hmm. Why would I carry that? So, um, and without that diagnosis, you can't get on. And you, you were supposed to do an exemption seven days before your flight. And I'm like, that wasn't a rule when we got there. So, again, we were there in Vegas for only a week. Um, from And he traveled to Nevada without a mask. Without a mask, nothing what happened. The? Everything was great. They um, they gave us a little trouble, but I explained to them exactly what I was trying to tell Robert. And they were like, okay. Like, just, you know, it's okay. <sighs> so, at that point, um, it escalates. He's getting really aggressive. I will then pull out my phone to record the incident. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> he pushes my hand. And <laughs> I'm from the Bronx, okay? All right. I think that that's a violation. Yeah. You're not going to touch me. So um, it, at this point, I'm just like, I'm just so astonished at the, the treatment we're receiving. I'm hurt. And I can't turn up the way that I would if Jude was there, wasn't there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if I wasn't, if it was just me, it, I'd probably get arrested, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, but I'm like, now I can't get arrested because then who's going to watch my son? That's always my thought. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, mm, I can't go to jail. Who's going to take Aiden, man? Take, right. I can't. I can't. So, um, I just broke down and I started crying and I was on the floor of the airport. And meanwhile, all of this is happening and Judah's just sleeping in the stroller. Completely unaware. Unaware and not problematic. Um, and he would not allow us to get our luggage. So now the luggage is on the plane and now I'm just begging for our luggage oh because God. if I got to stay another night, at least let me have all my team. My, all my tinctures were in there. Oh my and if for those who are listening and don't know what tinctures are, tinctures are just herbs that sit in alcohol or glycerin for about six weeks. Um, and then um, after the six weeks, the herbs, they ferment and they, they provide like medicine. It's like a more potent mm -hmm. um approach to taking the herbs mm -hmm. um and so i have all these tincture lines to stabilize his mood for the plane but also like we're in a different environment yeah. so like it's a lot and it it helps it yeah. helped we had all of that we had everything in that luggage and he wouldn't allow us to get the luggage he would not allow us to get on the plane our luggage was on the plane the plane ends up leaving um, like, what am I going to do? I'm stuck on the airport. Like, I'm stuck. Um, I call up United. I tell them the situation. I'm I'm bringing up laws. I'm bringing up all the things that they broke. I'm mm -hmm. bringing up, like, I'm a lawyer at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, they realize how in the wrong they are. Mm -hmm. They ended up giving us a flight in the morning. Um, so at that point, it was like we had to spend the night in the airport. Oh Nothing. I'm, my son is in an airport with none of his stuff. No tinctures, no stabilizers, nothing. No food. Like what? It was. It was a disaster. I mean, he was crying. It was the worst night of my life. It really was the worst. I felt so uncomfortable. I could not. I was like high alert. Um. We finally get on the plane um, back, and and everything is great. Um. You know, and, and he didn't wear a mask, you know. So I immediately was like, this can't be the end all be all. I got to get this on social media. Yeah. Um, and and I'm grateful that the story did take off, but we didn't get any um, anything from that. And I don't know what I was expecting, maybe like news coverage or, or just awareness of our situation and how mm -hmm. like, this is exactly what I mean. Our, our kids are not included in the conversation. Yep. And they make these mandates. They make these things not including kids who have sensory disorders or um, who are prone to suffocation or, you know, like they don't include our kids ever in those conversations. 
Yeah, especially kids that are don't have a visible dis- disability. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So um, I, I was I did a travel episode like giving tips and tricks to mm, parents because mm-hmm. like a lot of parents want to travel but they don't know how their kid is gonna react to it or like how they can prep them. Yeah. To get them like mentally ready to be able to leave their house which they're used to and it's everything familiar to go out and like do these things right Right. so a lot of these parents of like not a lot of these parents so we went to puerto rico and um you know they they call like oh if you you have a disability get up and board the plane right so i get up with aiden because i don't want him waiting like all that time in the airport Mm -hmm. and he's in his right because he has a disability yeah so I get to the counter and and the, the person that's taking the ticket, he's like, we call people with disabilities. I was like, yes, he has autism. And I looked at him dead is in his eye. And he was like, oh, okay. At least he at least he switched gears. Right? He said, Oh, okay. And then I'm walking and I kind of had an attitude with him. And he was like, Oh, um, then he meets me at the gate right before you get like before you do that thing to go on the actual yeah. airplane. Yeah. So he meets me there, and he's like, oh, my son has autism. Aww. And I'm looking at him like, yeah. are you serious? Right. And he's like, wow, thank you so much. I didn't know that you could do that. I'm like, so they don't even inform the people that work at the airport about it. That's my point of this whole thing. I, that's why I, I so the, <laughs> that really triggered me, man. Um. I wrote to United after that whole thing, and I was contacting you, name it, all the people Mm -hmm. on the list of, you know, higher up. And I said, you know, if you're not going to accommodate me with compensation, at the very least, you can get training for your staff so that this doesn't happen again. Because it seems to me Robert does this on the regular. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, their response was really like, um, yeah, we're, we apologize that you had that experience. However, it says it here on our terms and conditions that you were supposed to do it seven days um, prior to, um, like, do a, a mass uh, exemption seven mm-hmm. days prior to um, your flight. So they didn't acknowledge anything. It was very, like I said, generic response i don't even know if they even write our, our letter yeah and i will never fly with united again even though the prices are very tempting i still won't do it because um fly with them. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. not only that but the, then they charge you for like literally everything they're like oh you have a back of yeah you have a carry-on here that's 50 dollars um yeah i'm sorry you went through that though that's bullshit yeah it, it really uh, it traumatized me to a uh, point that I don't even know what to expect when to travel again. I haven't traveled since. Um one thing I did learn because um Rick put me on to was it as was it Rick? No. Love on the spectrum. Ah so Love on the Spectrum, a lot of these adults with autism, you can wear a there's a sunflower lanyard. Oh. So all the supposedly I never noticed. All the all the um staff at the airport are supposed to recognize that as somebody with a disability. Wow. So that I'm gonna try this next time I travel with Aiden, which he hates. Like he likes to be at the beach. Yeah. But he's like immediately after we're done, he's like, So when are we going to mommy's house? Aww. <laughs> But I'm going to try it and see because, like, you know, you never know, man. And then summer that's, vacation and spring break is coming up. Yeah. But, yeah, like, I saw the people on the show actually wearing them. Wow. Where and then I guess get people were, um, I think we can order them online. Okay. Once I find it, I'll, 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 I'll probably order, like, a couple for Jude and a couple for Aiden. Oh, you're the sweetest. Thank you so much. Yeah, but, um, yeah, no, like, it, 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 there needs to be some kind of, like, overall training mm-hmm. of people that are empowered to work with kids on the spectrum because at the end of the day, like, even police, man. Like, I don't know if there's a training oh, yeah. that police go through. Like, I'm, like, terrified. Yeah. Terrified. Right, right, right. I mean, like, like, I read stories, and it's really bad. And I don't ever want any of our kids to go through that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But there needs to be more education, and there needs to be also more humanity. Like, I get it that you have a job to do, but you need to be a human and yeah. operate in the in the sense, like, what it had it been my child in that situation 
would I want this happening to them? Yes, yes. And I, I think that the lack of empathy and, you know, I, it's really, it's apparent in these, like, big corporations, but also, like, in the training. I feel like um, if they just spent just a few more days or however, mm-hmm. whatever the training is to be in, um, more well united, yeah, yeah, just, like, just anything could have helped that situation not be what it was. Yeah. Um, but I'm, you know, I am, shout out to the stranger who sat with me. And I, I, to this day, I think it might have been an angel because uh, I looked up and the, the, I said the angel, but yeah, the human was gone. And I was like, oh. But yeah, this girl, um, I was crying on my, like, the floor, like, just, I can't believe this is the treatment I've gotten. Mm-hmm. Um, and she just stood with me and she rubbed my back and, um, she's like, I'm so sorry that this has happened to you. This is so unfair. I saw the whole thing play out. Um, and you know, she just reassured me. And I think in that moment I did, wasn't even, that's all I needed really just to, yeah. that was wrong. Um, and that was nice. And, and that also showed like the other side of humanity that yeah. there are people who are very empathetic towards, um, you know, just neurotypical children but just like the unfairness of it all um and had we had these conversations like for everything and if our kids were included in these conversations in training and all of these things even at customer service like it things would be so much different Mm -hmm. you know i agree but wait, let's let's switch gears. Let's get off that ugly topic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it that was real though. That was that that yo. I don't even know what I would have done if I was in that situation. I I feel whatever I felt back then. Now, it was it was very traumatizing. You felt violated. So violated. So violated. I I was like I can't. Even, you know what? Really, really. Before we switched, but really, what made me so sad in that moment is what if I didn't know English dude uh, oh do you man. know what I mean like what about those parents with who are at, who can't speak English or have broken English mm-hmm. you know and who are automatically assumed to be quote-unquote stupid but then they also have a child on the spectrum mm-hmm. or you know like a disability I, I can't even imagine what they're feeling in that moment yeah. If they feel lack of power for not being able to advocate the way that they want Completely to. Completely disempowered. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, but it's just, it, it, there's so much. Like, literally, like, discrimination is real for people that are neurodivergent, like our, like our children, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's not that people are, like, purposely like seeking them out to right. be mean to them right right but the thing is like when they find themselves in the situation with these people that are different than them it's so easy to be an asshole mm. and not you know look for that humanity and like operate from a place of love like you know that's that's my whole thing like treat others how you want to be treated like you would never want somebody to manhandle you and like you know deny your rights right and and, and be a jerk to you right you know? right 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 I, I don't understand. I think that, you know, the the times we're living in is very every man to themselves. Um, and I blame, like, being home for all those days, months, mm-hmm. whatever, a year uh, away from society. I think there has been, like, we've really done some sort of... Socially. Yeah, regression, you know? I mean, but in that... I feel like there's, there's like, a... Massive awakening mm. to the systems that are in place right now. Totally, totally. There is a great awakening. It's like a great reset. You know, a lot of people are, are realizing what's wrong with these systems and, and they're choosing not. I feel like this is why people are quitting jobs. Too. Yes. Um, People are deciding, like, this shit ain't for me. Mm. Like, why? Because you said so? I'm sorry. That doesn't work for me. Yeah, I, and I, and that's, that's the beauty of that too, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we all are little by little waking up Mm -hmm. and we're all little by little you know questioning the system and what would work before does not work necessarily now and it can't work because going forward we're becoming a very like uh digital yeah world right um 
it's just it's just weird. It's it's a weird climate to live in, but it's it, a really nice thing to see the collective waking up. Yeah, and then the, the, there's like, of course, there's gonna be um. So I I call these people the the flag holders. So mm. there's people that are the swimmers, right? Like we're already out there swimming to the new island. Yes. There's people that are like weighted seas, right? And then yes. there's the flag holders, ones that are like holding on for dear life to these systems that yeah. make quote-unquote makes sense to them yes because they are scared about what it could be like right they're operating from a place of fear so you know it, it's like you know there's gonna be people that are like that guy from yeah. united who's a fucking asshole and he shouldn't be working with people at all like maybe do the whatever Work on a computer by yourself i like, i'm saying i'm in saying. a fucking cubicle like get the fuck out of here the people that are working customer service that should never if you lack empathy, don't work with people. If you no. hate people, don't work with people. Like, there's so many other jobs. So many other jobs. Literally. I... I... <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Smokes imaginary cigarettes because I'm stressed. No, we're going to do a two-three class and then we're going to change the subject. <laughs> All right, you ready? Feel your belly? Exhale. I don't know if everyone heard, but I just kind of cracked my back because there was just a lot of tension in that. <laughs> One more time. Deep inhale. Exhale. Yeah, that, that helped. That helped. You're right. It's not mine to carry no more. But so, fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. No, but seriously. Um, so tell me more about Julius. So he's into art now and yeah. music. Yes. Tell me more about him. Like, what makes him sparkle? Uh, what, like... That's tell me, tell me about you, Luke. I know he's so, and guys, he's so handsome. Oh, like you really, don't understand. He really and he's is. the sweetest, and he's like a little snuggle bug. Too. Oh, he really is, which is like everything against what the 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 diagnosis says, right? Like they say, kids on the spectrum or people on the spectrum don't know how to show affection. And you know, it was like that at the beginning. I had to like wear him down like Steve Urkel. I just like put on my body weight and like love me. <laughs> you're like help me now he just randomly comes especially when he's trying to chop you out when he's trying to get something from me he'll come over and he'll be like I love you oh, <laughs> but he'll do multiple things because oh. he knows it breaks me like it'll warm my heart I'll be like I'm no. mad at you and he'll be like and I'm mad at mommy oh. <laughs> See, and like I'm putting and whatever you want, whatever you want yeah, after. Take it, take it off. It's fine. <laughs> Order that DVD. We have five of them. It's fine. Yeah, oh, Jude, Jude is a sweetheart. He's the sweetest kid. I um, am just so happy to be his mom. You know, I, I learn something new about him every single day. And yeah. it's such a crazy thing. He's five. He's going on six in May. And he's just becoming his own person. He's got a lot of personality. Um, he's a lot like me, um, which can also butt heads because I'm like, oh boy, you know, oh, like, calm down. or <laughs> just like stubborn, like how I am. Like, <laughs> okay, that's nice. What's your sign? I'm a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> you already know. Oh my god, this, yeah. there's a split inside of me that you don't want to see. <laughs> He got that side. Oh my gosh! He's angry man. Yes, <laughs> but he gets in his moods, right? He gets like, in his moods. He does. This like, one's very much like when, when, like this. I feel like it's a Scorpio thing. Like when he doesn't want to talk, he's kind of like whatever. Yeah. And then maybe he has days that he's like all on top of you, and he's like talking your ear off. And then there's other days that he's just like you can't be bothered. Totally. I think it might be. You know, or, <laughs> I, I really feel that. I feel. I'm, my son is a Taurus, so he was born. Oh my. God. Summer, summer. Yeah, so um, <laughs> so <laughs> there's a lot of like, all right, I'm the mom, you know, I wear the pants. Oh my god! But yeah, I it's a blessing to see who he is as a person and who I, what new interests he likes. Like right now, it's spiders and insects. Oh my god! Maybe he's gonna be an entomologist. Who knows, man? I mean, but then it was trained for a really long time, and but so like, it is. Like, I feel like that bug thing is, like, dope. Like, so dope. It's nice. He's, like, watching on YouTube. He goes on YouTube and watches all these different videos. I'm like, how do you even get there? How did you get to that video? It's yeah. so wild to see. 
they're they're just like so like when you tap into that little thing yes. that you love, it's like you open up like this Pandora's box to like their world. Like you really legit like you're like oh, I didn't know he could do that. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. That goes back to like feeding on their strengths yeah. instead of just focusing on their weaknesses. Yeah. But yeah, like you already told us about your business. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you do to self care though? Yeah. Because like I'm trying to teach moms like. Yes, you could be super mom and do all the hats and stuff, but like you really want to know the answer. also yeah. What do you do for self care? Uh, it, you said candid, right? Yeah, whatever. I masturbate and smoke weed, and that's okay. <laughs> okay, dude, <laughs> I'm not knocking it. Um, no, seriously, like it I, is what it is, guys. Seriously, like we're like. We're great moms and we do all the things. I still got needs. We're man. not saints and you not know, at all. And that's normal. And that's the thing. That's what I want to bring to the conversation. That you still got needs. You're still a very sexual being. You're still a person with needs and wants Thank and desires. You. Like you're not just this person's bitch. You know, you got yeah. you got your own thing that you need. Like you don't automatically become a saint because you're a mom. Oh yeah, no. Like. If yeah, anything, yeah. it's gotten a little, like, I tapped in, you know, more. I feel like, that's the thing. Like, I was, I had um, a Gree from Blue House of Brooklyn on, and she, and the, No way! Yeah, so, uh, the, the episode is called Central Motherhood, and then... I gotta, I gotta check that out. Totally, we totally talk about, like, yes, we are mothers, yes, we're doing all the things, but we still want to feel sexy. We want to be mm. able to check ourselves out and, yeah. like, like, feel ourselves and just, like enjoy our divine feminine you yeah. know like we it can't just be operating from a space of like oh i'm just giving 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 and not pouring into myself because there's no way that you can be a great mom not if you're all. like running on zero on fumes agreed agreed i think um that's why they say you know when you're on an airplane you got to put your oxygen mask on she first. said that no way yes no way i'm For real? so serious Oh shit, that's dope. That's insane. That's synchronicity. That's dope. Okay, universe, I see you. But yeah, no. Um, and then you know, I make sure that I have the regimen of, of making sure that I tap into myself. It's not all the time. I'm not gonna really sit here and I have my yoga mat all the fucking time. Yeah, it's really difficult some days to fit in that. Right. Yeah. But if I don't. <laughs> And I don't listen to that voice. Then there's just a spiral of, yeah. you know, and I and I've been there, man. I go there and I try not to be there. Yeah. And so I like before I recognize those signs when I can't focus on one thing and I'm hyper sensitive or like just all these things. And I like okay, I need to I need to meditate. I mm -hmm. need to breathe. I need to do what's gonna tap in. You know, I you know I believe heavy in God. I need to see something that's inspirational read something mm -hmm. you know uh a verse or or just connect like hey god what's up or this mm -hmm. is what's what i'm feeling and being so candid and open and authentic in that relationship with god um however it may look to anybody else it's not like typical mm -hmm. but it's still there and that that relationship and bonding you know with higher higher spirit um God, that is my saving grace right there, mm -hmm. you know? So um, incorporating, like, the daily spirituality. spiritual, the spirituality aspect and realizing that I am a spiritual being in a human body. Mm -hmm. And if I operate too much in my human form, that's when I feel depleted, mm -hmm. you know? But it's also balanced, too, because I'd be way too spiritual. It's like, all right, bitch, you, you a human, though. <laughs> you you got to calm down. You got to... <laughs> You that. know, so finding that happy medium is the everyday process, but like do what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And with that, Comadres, we're going to end the episode. This was such a good conversation. So good. <laughs> so good. Thank you so much for having That's me. That's it. You're bestie. You're my bestie. That's it. You're my life. Well, well, life, girl. What you doing like weekend? <laughs> Shit. Have the boys in the room. Make some wine. All right, oh, comadres, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And um, as usual, you know where to follow me. Follow me at Comadre on the Pod on IG and follow Imani on IG at The Hippie Mom. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, make sure you check out those tinctures and those herbal teas and um, herbal cigarettes. That herbal so cigarettes as nice. well. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me a comadregram. If you have any questions for Imani, send me a comadregram as well at ocomadriando at esctheNetwork.com. And slide into my DMs. You know, I'm very responsive. Yeah. Yes. And thank you for spending time with your comadres. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>